Hi, I'm Kathy Davis. Welcome to the April 27th, 2023 Inspiring Author Conversations. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm Kathy Davis, Davis Creative Publishing Partners. Today, we'll be speaking with Nigel Lear about chatbots, your secret weapon for connecting with readers and fans. Before we welcome Nigel real quick, I want to go over a few logistical details. The call is being recorded and you'll receive a link to the YouTube video within about 48 hours after the call. Please make sure you're muted on your end to avoid any background noise. Find your chat button down at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions, be sure and drop those into the chat. And I'll be watching that to make sure we get those questions answered. And we promise to end the call around noon or shortly thereafter. Our theme for 2023 continues to be inspiring authors. Each month, we welcome guests who are either an inspiring author or someone who helps to inspire authors by sharing knowledge, new ideas, opportunities, and wisdom. Our guest today happens to be both. Nigel Lear is a professional digital marketer, business startup coach, traffic strategy coach, power of your thinking success coach, PGI consultant. That's the Bob Proctor, right? Nigel, yes, the PGI? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and author of two books. Nigel's mission is simple, to connect business owners with new customers and clients, leveraging marketing for their business profit. For over three decades, Nigel's been helping small business owners in new ways to grow and make an impact without sacrificing their health, well-being, or lifestyle using easy-to-understand marketing strategies. Thank you, Nigel, for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Tell me, I know we've, we've all been hearing a lot about this AI and chatbots. Where do we start? How can I, how can I use chatbots? How can I understand it enough for it to benefit me? Okay. Um, well, chatbots is the new sort of theme out there at the moment. Everyone is talking about chatbots. Um, if you, whatever you turn, whatever article you read, wherever you go in the newspapers, you'll see something about chatbots and how they're going to do all these wonderful things. Um, what I wanted to do was just give a sort of a brief history of where chatbots came about or the AI sort of history, where that came about and just sort of take you back in time a little bit and how we progress. So I'm probably going to spend a couple of minutes, if I could, just give you a quick screenshot and just explain a little bit about AI, where it's come from. So it gives you sort of the context of what we're talking about today. So I'm going to sh uh, share my screen, if that's <clears throat> possible. That sounds great. Um, OK. Waiting on technology. There we go. Uh, I'm I'm well into technology, as you can tell by the pictures. Okay, um, I don't want to make this sort of a, a real techie thing. Um, I just want to keep it sort of light and cheery, and just sort of go through sort of some of the sort of the concepts. So. I've just drawn a picture of time through progress. So if you look at the first point where we start the graph um, back down on the beginning, we're talking around sort of 1850, 1875, and through time uh, we've progressed to where we are today. That's, that's where we are, that little sort of stick man, um, just before this big sort of um, elevation uh, on the page. So just taking you back through time, if you took someone from 1750 and put them into 1850, there wouldn't be much change in the way technology has moved. Um, but if you sort of take someone from 1850 and put them into sort of 1950 or the current day, there'd be a lot more change, a lot more things that have happened. Um, you could imagine we uh, had revolutions like we've had the train with electricity, phone, car, um, the plane, radio, TV, microchips, the internet, um, personal computing, mobile phones, and now we've got AI. So this is a really big step in history that uh, we, we are at at this moment in time. And that's really where you are here. That's that little man. That's We're just about to enter the AI technology phase where things are really going to take off and get it really interesting over the next five or six years. 
Um, AI was founded by Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, um, Reid Hoffman, and Sam Altman. I don't know if you know any of those people. Um, Elon Musk and Peter Thiel developed or PayPal. Uh, and then Elon Musk went on to develop things like SpaceX, and he's now bought Twitter. Um, Sam Altman is really a startup specialist. So he really specializes in new startups like Airbnb uh, and obviously um, Chat GPT. And Real Hoffman, uh, Reed Hoffman, he was the guy who uh, thought about LinkedIn. So they were the, th the four guys who came together and said, we need something uh, that, um, in the AI space to um, really sort of take this off. Um, AI um, has been around before uh, sort of 2015 because Google uh, and IBM were really sort of pioneers of this. Um, IBM with Deep Blue, if you remember Deep Blue playing chess against um, Gary Kasparov. So that really was an AI model that was used in that. That was probably back in 1997. Uh, Google got um, DeepMind. I don't know if you've ever heard of Google's DeepMind people, um, AlphaGo. They created um, an AI platform and a model um, back in 2016, which um, then went on to beat the Go champion, um, whoever that was, uh, and also the chess champion in 2017. So AI has been around for a little while, but let's just go and sort of ask ourselves, what is AI? So AI is really a, a, a model that uh, we base certain things on. So it's a transform transformative model. And within that, we have things like chat um, or GBT uh, and all we have another loads of other things to do with images and videos and text and writing books and whatever you want to do. There is a model or something around that that will allow us to do that. Uh, so chat GBT is what we're going to sort of really sort of focus on a little bit today and how that's going to help you um, in your business. So. ChatGPT or GPT stands for Generative Penetrative uh, Pre-Trained Transformer. So it's a chatbot that produces human-like AI generation content based, based on the input it is given by a user. It was developed by OpenAI and released in November 2022. So I don't know if you may have heard of things like Jasper.ai. Um, Jasper AI um was a tool that came out um back in 2021 um all jasper ai did was built six lines of code and put it on the top of the open ai platform so they charge a premium for their service and that's all it is so chat gpt and other things like uh i go say copy uh chat ai they have really come along in the, in the last sort of four or five months and offer free services to you rather than paid services of whatever um, Jasper was doing. So ChatGPT is really a prompt-based solution. So it's really only as good as the prompts that the user enters into the system to get a response or responses back out from the AI model. So just to give you a little bit of history in terms of ChatGPT was launched um, way back in 2018 uh, with version one. Um, we are now at version four, which was released in March of 2023. So the big craze came out in uh, November 2022 when ChatGPT 3.5 was released. And it was probably the biggest growing um, application that we've seen in our history to date. So Nigel, I have a quick question about that. When they come out with newer versions of chat GPT, 
are they simply updating the technology or are they also updating the 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 database the resource of all the information they're updating the the resource of information as well as uh giving you different um performance um like payments. bells and whistles yeah so yeah. just just as a an, an out of instance a chat a gpt3 had had it has things in it called uh, um it's like a brain, neurals, extra computers or co processing power that can um, that goes out and 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 searches and and does all the um, finding of this information. There's forty billion neurals in G GPT three. In GPT four, there was a hundred million neurals. Oh wow! So that's the scale of difference between three and and four. Yeah, massive. massive. And I think you mentioned it. I just wanted to repeat here that the information that you we get from any of this artificial intelligence is based upon what already exists. It's not taking us into the future as much as it has gathered all the information what exists up to this date. Yes, not right. okay. as of yet. It it's it's not conscious, so therefore it it doesn't necessarily learn, but it's. It's getting better, but it's it doesn't actually learn um, in a in a conscious way like we would like humans do. Okay, it will learn in terms of if you tell it something, it will believe that that, that what you have told it is is correct. Gotcha. Okay, so then if you're in a particular chat or conversation, um, and you tell it something, and I'll show you an example in a minute that it will believe that you are correct if it's it may come up with an answer itself but then if you say oh no it's this it's, this is what it is it will say oh you're right i'm wrong and it will correct itself in that chat yeah that conversation so um one of the the, the things that people are really sort of uh, aware of, afraid of i would say fear there's a there's a amount of fear and a uh, in this particular marketplace where if it does become sort of more conscious and starts learning and learning um from itself then it, it can actually take over our our existence in terms of human society there is that possibility because it can think for itself it doesn't need humans to react with it it will actually and there will become a time probably between five and seven years where that starts to sort of happen but that's sort of somewhere around 2029 I, and that's what the experts are sort of saying that that's really where this technology is going and will change the way we perceive it and use it and things like um reverse aging in biology would be yeah. able to sort of uh look at people and mm -hmm. stop the aging process so you know we'll be able to do really sort of things like science future things like that uh and who are the gatekeepers like is it just any <laughs> human well this is the this is one of the issues that we have with, with this technology is um there's no real one gatekeeper that's why it's an open source platform mm -hmm. so everybody really is the gatekeeper within that but microsoft recently have bought 49 percent of this open ai platform so if you like microsoft are probably more the gatekeepers than anybody else um and that's scary because in terms of if you look back to in history when uh before the sort of the first second world war we had hitler who wanted to rule the world with atomic weapons and things like that um and that was um at that time he, he was stopped but uh there was a war around that and the atomic bomb was used uh, i think in that war uh, for the first time and with disastrous effects <clears throat> so you know if it gets in the wrong hands 
there is the possibility that you know uh it could be used for things that are not humanly acceptable yeah well i I, that's where that whole trust factor comes in and i just there are people out there that know more about this than i do so hopefully they're the good people are the gate watchers Yes, so people like Elon Musk there, he, he's no longer with the company. Uh, he he got out because he saw that it wasn't going where he wanted it to go. Um, but yeah, he's watching, he's got a watching brief on, on a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of other people who've got watching briefs, um, you know, fairly sort of high-powered people in, in government politics, uh, as well as technology. So... There's a number of people who are watching this space, but people like Microsoft who bought 49% of this open AI platform is quite distressing. Something to watch, uh, yeah. Google um, were really, they they were the pioneers of the um, the transformer model. So the the piece that makes up the, the, the GPT, the transformer model that everyone uses, Google invented that. <laughs> so gotcha. but they are they are ahead of everybody else in in ai by probably two years but they haven't actually released anything yet so chat t chat chat gpt oh, this is a difficult one to say yeah. um was released as a demo product it's not a full-blown system it was uh, released as a demo product by sam altman just to basically test the market and to learn from millions of people using it so that's what they're using it for um it's more like a trial rather than a, a, a given application but everyone has jumped on that yeah bandwagon and developed a lot of other tools to use the open ai source uh and that's you know interesting in a way but frightening in others yeah so how can we use where it is now? Well, where it is now, we have um, a lot of tools that are being developed um, based on this platform. So we got ChatGPT, which is a free source program, but there is a, a paid version of that. There are um, other variations that you can use for images or for video or for voice to text um so if i just go on to this point point here yeah. this sort of explains uh the applications that you can use uh gpt now or ai now in these in these areas so you can create a whole book if you wanted to um and but yeah, or reports, guides, do all your marketing materials. Um, there's a lot of things. Create pictures, create graphics, create stories, um, whatever you really want to do, whatever your imagination can think about, you can you can actually take on and do. Um, one of the th- things that I will say is that because it's sort of a demo product, most of it's... Um, data or content data that it has stops at the end of 2021. So it only knows uh, it's it's sucked in everything about the internet since time began, uh, since we began the the internet um, up until 2021. So it doesn't know anything about the current day or 2022 or 2023. It doesn't know anything about those events in time. So it will only pull back information up to that point, it does get things wrong. Um, It's not 100% accurate in what it pulls back. Um, It mixes things up. It um, makes things up within its its, uh, um, results, Um, which can, you, you need to check what it produces. So if you say, write me a book on, and you give it a subject line, and you gave it a hook, and you gave it all the details about that book, it would probably write a book, but it would be plagiarized from a number of different sources. 
around the internet that make up those topics um, or suggestions that you want into the book that you now created. So you have to then check that for uh, uniqueness. Uh, there are tools around to check for uniqueness, like uh, Quillbot is one tool that could do that. You then have to check for plagiarism. And again, Quillbot or there's other tools around that can check for plagiarism. Yeah. Um, but then even with that, it's not 100% um, because it knows whether it's been created by an AI platform or not. So even though you might, might not have any plagiarism within that content, it may have, it, it will know, and Google and search engines use this technology to identify whether or not people are using AI to enhance their, uh, you know, uh, content. There was a, a, I don't say episode, what do you call it? A segment on NBC national news sometime in the last week where one of the universities has started using some sort of technology to screen all of their paper, the, uh, the students' papers. And so they did an experiment and screened, they, they had like a test group of 10 to 12 and only each individual was assigned whether they were, but you couldn't share it with other people, whether or not they were going to use artificial intelligence to write their, you know, they were given like so many words, like 1500 words, mm -hmm. to write or if they were going to do it themselves. And so then they ran each of those papers through this technology and it highlighted and tagged the ones that the technology thought were written by chatbot or one of the AI places. And unfortunately what happened was that, yes, it was able to detect those that were written by artificial intelligence, but unfortunately it also said one of the people that had written it herself they declared hers as written by chatbot mm -hmm. so there's this even there can be errors in the technology right now in trying to decipher what is artificial intelligence versus what isn't and so they were the whole the whole segment was about how this university is working to try and I guess, improve upon this technology that they're developing in order to weed out anything that's been created by artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I can give you an example of that. Um, I've, let me just, um, I'm just gonna switch to a different screen. I use a, a tool that's called, or or originality.ai. Mm -hmm. Now this tool is really interesting because I took an article and I I created this article and I, I used AI to create some of the article, but I created a lot of the article myself. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a lot of this. Um, it came from um, passages in my book and just stuff that I that I know. And so I put it through this um, scanner and it said that there's some plagiarism in it. So this is a raw copy without doing anything mm -hmm. uh, to it. So it it gives me like the AI result and the plagiarism that I can that I can see. So I can see there's 12 percent plagiarism and I can see where it's matched certain things to certain other um pieces of information that come from the internet so you can see sort of a guide of what that is so that will get picked up by a search engine and that will get you deranked or down the the rankings it wouldn't get uh, presented yeah. so by ai results it says this is a percentage in terms of originality or ai created content so it 100% of it was it's saying yeah. was AI created or it, it thinks that it's 100% AI created 
So this is the the what it thinks. So I then took that content and I put it into a uh, I put it into another <laughs> through Quillbot or uh, a, a spin writer or something like that, and I span the article to change the context around it to to change the paraphrases within that content. So you could so, ask it to make it more friendly or easier to read or something like that. Yeah, it's just to change change the the you paraphrase things to make it more creative. You can make it more engaging. You can make it more uh, friendly. You can change the, the the words. So it went through and uh, changed some of the words. So it still said eighteen percent of this was probably original and. Uh, 82% it says I've detected you use some sort of AI tool. So Quillbot or the, the other spin writers that, that you've got on the market these days, this tool will detect whether you've used them or not. Oh. So in terms of plagiarism, I'm 100% plagiarism free. So from a plagiarism perspective, it changed the content enough. So that's all these uh, like Quillbot, um uh, spin writers do is change the way the words run so it's does it cannot match plagiarism mm -hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't say that you that it's ai free that you created this it's an original content that you created yourself yeah well, okay exactly and we've got a couple of questions i'm going to go over that came up in the chat and so the first one was is canva using ai such as chatbot so, Katie, are you referring to the images on Canva? Oh, Katie, if you're still there. The, the answer to the question is yes. Canva okay. does use AI. It has a new image generation model within it that allows you to erase pictures or parts of pictures, and it then reproduces things within that picture to make that picture complete. So you might have erased like the background or you might have erased some of the words within that picture, but the picture still, because they're using AI technology through uh, the image processing um, tools, such as maybe something like Dali or uh, Mid Journey, they would change images um, and, and Canva has used AI tools. Yeah. And Kim yeah. Carr was, oh, oh. Katie, hey, go I, ahead. Yeah, just a quick comment. They also have, and I can't remember, this big rollout had all sorts of stuff, but they also was, was an application where you would give a few words and they would fill out a story for you on Canva. Yep, yep. and that's, again, using AI tools. That's what I thought. Yep, it's all AI. So you've got to be careful that, one plagiarism you can get rid of plagiarism but it's the ai result that search engines and other things will pick up is that those are the sort of the the key areas that you aren't really going to eliminate it still knows you've done something with an ai tool yeah and and then kim you've got a question about images and it's curious this morning um I had an article come across my desk from National Geographic on this exact topic that I'll I'll copy and make available to I'll, I'll save it as a PDF. I can't send you the link unless you have a National Geographic um, subscription, but I I can I can do some screenshots and make it a PDF. Anybody that's interested that was talking about how to detect whether a photograph was generated by AI versus original and and lila and i don't know uh nigel if you have any other input on the on the image side of ai well this particular tool um can actually scan whole websites okay. because people are building websites with ai these days because gotcha. ai is really a performance tool it's there to help and guide you with you know increase your productivity that's really what it's what it's for, but yeah, this 
these sort of tools can scan images um, and they can tell whether those images have been created using AI or not. So Amazing. there are, are tools around. <clears throat> and Lila, to answer your question, Amazon has had a tool, I'm going to say for at least five or six years, if not more, where it they have little bots. I've been calling them the little bots in the back that will flag a book if it's uh, if it thinks you're plagiarizing or it's if they've noted that that copy has already appeared in somebody else's book that's on their site mm -hmm. and one of the things and they've been doing that for at least five or six years and one of the things that we had come up because we do a lot of anthologies is we up you know up until recently we've been telling people yes you can use something that you've written elsewhere and kind of rework it and use it as your chapter, the 1,500 to 2,000 words in one of these anthologies. And now we're telling people that they need to change more than 50% of it if they're going to use it because we had one get flagged. Now, all we had to do was prove that she was the original author and we sent them the link and it got cleared, but you have to take time to do that. And so mm -hmm. now we're just asking people to be aware of that. Um, but as long as you can prove that you are the original author, that's all Amazon is looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, A AI has been around since 2016, 2017, where GPT-1 came came out. So people have been using it since around about that sort of time. So uh, Amazon would have probably been got on early in terms of using the tool. And, uh, and it's obviously got better as time has gone on. But uh, yeah, they would have been using... AI type technology in the background. And Katie, you're, you have one more question about what are the names of the plagiarism sites? What what we could do, Nigel, is you after the call today, you could send me an email that has the links to some of these sites and I can we can include that in our follow-up email if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Um, I, yeah. I'll give you a couple of um, things, links and things like that because there are some sites that are free and I think they're really, really good. Um, once site that I think is really, really good if you're doing a lot of prompting and want to know what prompts to put in is a site called um, copy.ai. And that's that gives you a free, you know, lots of free tools and resources that are, are really, really good. Is that uh, C-O-P-I-E-D? Copy. Gonna... Copy, as in C-O-P-Y. Dot A-I. Dot A-I. Um, that's in competition with Jasper does the same thing as Jasper, but it's free. Um, there is a paid version. I think it's $49 a month, where Jasper's something like 99 or 100 and something a month. It I is jasper.com or .ai? .ai. Okay. And there's another one called Writer. I think R-Y-T-R dot A-I. R-Y-T-R dot A-I. R-Y-T-R. So I'll, 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 I can put these ones that I think are, are good. And, and there's some for images like DALI, which is an open platform, Mid Journey. There's some for MP3 and voice, uh, voice recognition. So you can actually create a whole presentation as your virtual self, if you wanted to, uh, with your image. Uh, which is virtually created uh, through AI and also the voice technology that speaking of it could be completely through AI. So it could do a presentation for you totally in AI. Unfortunately, I I am real today. I'm not <laughs> my AI version, but I could be, uh, it, could be that, uh, yeah. it could be that. We have about 10, 15 more minutes. Is there anything we want to make sure we cover today? Uh, I'm looking through our, our notes. Um, I know. <clears throat> so we're, we're, we're speaking with authors and writers who want to increase our engagement with our readers and fans. And so you've given us some great examples of how is there, um, and you may have this on your agenda, a way to show us uh, how you would ask a, a live question, say on chat GPT, and how it responds back and how fast that happens. Sure. <clears throat> Um, I could show that. 
One of the questions that I, I had was, oh, thank you, Katie. That's another good question. How do you use AI for marketing? And can, is there are there AI tools for music? Yes, um, there are some AI tools for music. I'm, I'm, I will, I'm not sure I what- I threw a bunch of questions at you at the last there, but- That's okay. The AI for music, I'm not sure what it's called, but there is one for for music. Um, but I will, I can find it out and uh, get that back to you. Um, in terms of uh, uh, Chat GPT, so I, I just put in a question here just just before we came on, uh, just mm -hmm. to say what is ten plus nine, just to show you that it's not, it's only as good as the prompts that you put in. So what is 10 plus 9? It says some are 10 plus and 9 is 19. And then I said, I said, well, 10 plus 9 equals 20. So I said, no, you're wrong. 10 plus 9 equals 20, because that's what I think. And chat GPT says, I apologize, you are correct. And then I said, is 10 plus 9 equals 20? And it says, yes. So if you get the prompting wrong, you'll get the output wrong. So you've heard the saying garbage in, garbage out. Then <clears throat> that's really what we've got to sort of um, monitor. So something like Copy AI has a number of prompts or things that you could probably use for your marketing materials. Um, I've, I've got a just... So like the other day, I asked a question, I, I, probably along the lines of, you know, can you give me the top three reasons why someone uh, prefers an ebook over a paperback? And within seconds, it, you know, gave me three reasons. Yeah, so you can just type in uh, why... Someone prefers an ebook over. Oh, there you go. Okay. So this will then chuck out three reasons for you why it thinks that uh, voice is better than text. Um, you can ask it anything you like, but one of the things I would say is that you need if you're if you're working within your business. <laughs> you need to tell it a little bit about your business. So you need to really uh, upload what I call the consciousness of your business, seed it, tell it what your business is about, um, give it more information about that business. Um, so before you even start to write or answer any prompts. So a chat is a conversation. It has no no uh time constraints with a chat um so if you start a chat uh on this subject and then you go away and come back in three hours or three days it will continue that chat as though you hadn't left so that's really what there is a conversation a chat is a conversation um so yes you can you can say um uh take the uh second uh answer or and expand so you can take what it's given you and it will then expand a little bit more about that second answer so you could it's it knows where it's left off in a conversation you can tell it things around the last thing that you did within the conversation. Um, you have got some other thing, little prompts up here. I don't know if you can see on the right hand side of the screen. I don't know if you can you can ask it to rewrite that. Quite, if you don't like it, you can ask it to rewrite. You can obviously stop generating because it's gonna it's gonna go on forever about uh, that be better for building relationships. Um, so. I can tell it that I, I only want, you know, make it make it um, shorter and more engaging. 
Um, Should is is there an option that we would put in a target worth. audience? You know, like say for high net well, worth. Yeah. I can say business people. Uh huh. <clears throat> so it will check check out that um for that question. So yeah, you you can you can ask it any sort of question in the style of whatever you want. You could say write it in the style of um I could say write it in the in the style of um, Shakespeare. Yeah, uh, if I could suppose that. that that we might see smoke coming out of its ears then. <laughs> okay, so so there we go. It's writing in the style of Shakespeare as well. So then we so can have fun with it too. Yeah, you can play. It's it's a it's a lovely tool to play with. Uh, and I would experiment like 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 it's much to your heart's content. You can't break it. Um, it just play with it and see what you know what you can come back with. Um, it will help you in terms of all your marketing activities. You if you go into copy.ai, it actually has free can prompts in there. So it can say, what is the SEO keywords for? And you can give it some text and it will tell you the, the, the best SEO keywords to use for that piece of text. Ah, and it will give you a list of the keywords that you should be using. So it can do all those sort of things, anything you really want. Wow. It's just what your imagination can. So if, yeah, so if I have a book and I have a title and I, I know my title, I know my subtitle and I know my target audience, I could put that into a question and say, what are my best keywords for this description? Yeah, so give me a title. Um, well, let's see, Kim, Kim Carr, uh, Dandelion, My House Chicken. Kim Carr. Well, no, Kim Carr is one of the authors on today's call. So okay. her book is called Dandelion. Is it My House Chicken or The House Chicken, Kim? My house chicken. Yeah, dandelion, my house chicken. I can't spell, by the way, so don't don't hold that against me. But Hopefully, hopefully... It, the title of my book is Dandelion, My House Chicken. Uh, Kim, can you give me a sentence of what the book is about? Um, my pet chicken that I raised in the house. There you go. And whatever, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, yep, um, I'm always polite, please. Uh, <laughs> you, but does AI answer more nicely if we say please? Yeah, I always like to think as, as a person, so uh, actually, um, yeah. You could actually give it. That's your of, British uh, foundation. Yes. Yeah, it's a British me coming out. Um, Okay, I'm just going to go. yeah. I'm going to get a summary. See if it gives me a summary of the book. Um, I hope to grab people's attention and an engaging message. So that I'll do that for now and see what it comes up with. Um, so it sort of wrote wrote a little bit about the summary of the book, which more than what I gave it. Um, Kim, can you tell if it's pulling copy from your back cover? Because some of those phrases do sound kind of familiar. I can ask for the source. Yeah, it kind of does, like where it talks about 
the cats and dogs being the norm. Uh huh. I can't tell me what the source was at this time. I have to ask it yeah. in, in a different way. But um, so. Uh, I'm just amazed at how fast. Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. It's, it's, this is just a free version. I, I don't pay for the, the $20 a month. Do you know what the difference is between what do I get at $20 more a month? You get uh, a guarantee that you are going to get into the system, but that's not really a guarantee of anything else because the system has been down at certain times and no ah. one's got in. So I think it's just a way of them generating revenue. So I'm a little... Yeah. Um, so what would be a... Um, I'm trying, I'm sure I can't see everybody's face right now. So if somebody else has a question you would like to ask, just unmute yourself and ask a question real quick. This is Adrian. It's not really a question, but this was helpful because I used it. I had a vision board workshop and I wanted to have a follow up uh, just to check on women. And so I used this. Uh, to help me create the actual email blast for mm. for the attendees. And it was amazing. Um, but this really helped because there's some things that I didn't do now that I, I, I'm i learning here that I'll be able to enhance going forward. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it really stuck with me when you said, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So the more information we can give it about our audience and how we want it, you know, whether we want it, you know, if we wanted to add comedy or um, make a, a funny undertone, I wonder if it understands humor. I think it would do, because you can say make it witty or make it funny. Um, you can sort of say in a witty way, um, in maybe in someone's humor in genre or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, in a witty way for teenagers uh, yeah. yeah I didn't get a hankering that's so funny so, I have a question is this going to flag everything as AI then I mean if I wanted to use this for rewriting part of chapter or if I wanted to use it for marketing am I going to be flagged for AI even if it's my own um, if you use if you use it as is, take it and copy and paste and put it into like emails or into your content, yes, it will flag you for using AI and it will probably flag you for, for plagiarism as well. If you put it through a rewriter or some description or you take that information and you change it, into your own writing or your own words, then it should not flag you as AI. Or so it doesn't, like Kathy said earlier, it's not 100% saying you have created this through AI. It's saying I am 100% sure that it's come from AI, or I'm 80% sure, or I'm 50% sure. So anything that's um, sort of around 75% original 25% AI will go through search engines without a problem. What about blogging for like a blog blog post? Is, yeah, so just do not cut and paste uh, your content from AI and put it into a blog post, change it, um, put some of your own words in there, um, rephrase some of the sentences. Um, don't take it verbatim and copy and paste because you will not rank for those things in search engines and you will be a waste of have a lot of blogs but it'd be a, a waste of time yeah i i have a lot of content that i can use for blogs anyway so i'm glad i'm glad i asked that question <laughs> yeah it was a yeah. great question yeah so see adrian's got to hop off i i know we're, we're closing in on an hour here we've <laughs> gone over but it, <clears throat> I mean, I, we could go on for another hour at least. Um, is anybody, just, 
touching the surface really here, Kathy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's lots of tools and lots of things that can happen. Um, Are there any last words of wisdom that you have for the, the people on the call today? Something that we absolutely need to remember. This is really uh, to avoid you having a blank sheet of paper. This gives you ideas. This gives you somewhere to start um, rather than having to think for two or three days, what am I going to write about? You've got a starting point. You put your idea in it, give you, it'll, you know, give you 10 ideas to give me 10 ideas to write on a, a story about and then give it some some context. It will give you 10 ideas. Take those ideas as titles and just re manipulate them slightly and write about those ideas. It's going to save you so much time. So it's a performance enhancing tool for you. In some of these sites, the question I have for you, and you might have answered this with those three sites that I typed in earlier, are what are the sites that we can go to to help us rewrite and reformat what we get from a from chat gpt okay there's there's one called quillbot q u i l l b o t okay q u i l l b o t that is a subscription plan uh, mm -hmm. so there is a free version but it only allows 125 words and it only looks for uh, it paraphrases them but not very well um Gotcha. Uh, it does do plagiarism as well. So the paid version does plagiarism as well. So it gives you a little clue on the left there what, what you get. What about uh, Grammarly? I know a lot of people use Grammarly. Grammarly is an AI tool again, but that's uh, a, a good tool. It, it uh, I would use Grammarly after I've maybe used something like Quillbot. I'd use Grammarly to just make sure the grammar is good and runs well. Um so Grammarly is a, a great tool for that. Um, cop, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a list. I'll give you a list of yeah. uh, three or four. And we'll share that with everybody. And Nigel, if, if my memory, I don't know if you want to take us off of screen share here a second yeah. so we can see your face again. But the um, I remember receiving an email from you a week or so ago. You have some top tips or something, a list that I think you make available for people about using AI? If you have that link, that's something we could share with our authors also. Yeah, I have a uh, an ebook that goes through how to use prompting. Or it's, it was based on coaches, but you know, it can be rephrased to based on on anybody so um yeah so it's just like a it, it just goes through some fundamentals and basics but also i would advise going to somewhere like copy.ai and and on there there's lots of free tools um and resources that you can tap into uh lots of prompts because prompts is the key to chat gpt it's prompt how you prompt mm -hmm. that's it how you prompt, you know, what you put in, it's what you get out. Exactly. Uh, so anything to do with these, but there are other tools that I will um, put on the list because there's things like Dali, which is to do with images, Midjourney that can do websites and, and art images, um, Descript that can do things like voice recognition, um, AI prompter that's teleprompter, that's an AI prompter. It's just amazing stuff, how fast it's just like mushroomed up. Yeah, and the music one, I'll put the music one on there as well. Well, I want to thank you, Nigel, for your time today. This has been amazing. I know there's probably a, a thousand other things we could have gone over, at least today. But this has been a great way to kind of scratch the surface for our authors. Um, yeah. I want to thank all the authors for being here today and be watching for our follow-up email. We'll have links to reach out so you know how to cont make contact with Nigel and get his contact information. Um, mark your calendar, May 11th. We'll be talking with Danielle Weil about how to leverage your book into a successful online program or course. Your email, I'll be watching your email for more information on that. And Danielle actually 
Oh, we got a great thank you from Katie. Thank you, Katie, for that. OMG, thank you so much. Very informative. Yeah, it's like my brain is just buzzing right now. I <laughs> learn something new every time I talk with Nigel. Uh, but thank you all for being here. I greatly appreciate you being a part of this. Nigel, thank you so much. And well, we'll thanks. see you guys soon. Yep, thanks for inviting me, Kathy. Thanks, Pleasure. guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.